Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's public webinar. Uh, September, the month of the 1% loser or half percent, however you want to look at that. <laughs> Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I want to start off and I want to, I want to kind of lay out why so many people have so much trouble navigating these markets. If you look on the lower left here at 828, <clears throat> there is no excess on that low. It's a non-excess low. <clears throat> the two most important concepts we deal with are excess and balance. The lack of excess, it's one of those things. What makes it so difficult is that you have to carry information forward. In other words, you have to put it aside. You have to be able to <clears throat> reach and grab it when necessary. But people talk about the importance of patience in trading. And that's where it comes in because there's always a, a lag time between, if you really understand the markets, there's usually a lag time between what's going to happen and what is happening. So you start off and it's not uncommon to get a non-excess low when the markets are too short. And you see on the following day, I think this is the 29th, look how thin this market is. When you see this market go up like, the, like it did, that is price going crazy. That is short covering and it's weaker hands momentum traders just jumping on board and not giving any real thought to what's going on other than FOMO afraid of missing out. When I see this, and if you've attended these before, you'll hear me comment a lot of times that this is a very dangerous situation because there's no backing and filling. In other words, the market didn't go up, move sideways, you know, go up again, move sideways, went straight up. This is usually short covering. Short covering raises the momentum indexes. It brings in a tremendous number of momentum longs just following price. And, the market, and then the market continues for some time. So you see the market goes up until we get an excess high. And remember, excess is one of the most important concepts we deal with. Since that excess high, the market has been one time framing lower. We don't count the holiday. This high did not take out this high. This high did not take out this high. You've got a gap. Gaps are very important. And we've got another gap this morning. So what's happened is you've come all the way. You had no backing and filling here, which means that once this market starts to give way, there's nothing to slow this down. And I've always discussed the when it, the backing and filling when the market moves sideways for a considerable period of time. It's like an elevator stop. If the elevator starts to fall, something catches it, holds it for a while. There's nothing here. So to come through this is not a surprise at all. Um, additionally, you had multiple gaps. Some had been filled, but you had multiple gaps underneath the market. And that is another sign that you had a tremendous amount of just non-thinking momentum type of trading. Now, the current market we're looking at, um, your next real reference is, is right here at this non-excess low. That's the next reference. Coming into this morning, overnight inventory, overnight inventory is 100% short. We have a gap and we have the gap guidelines. Now, one of the things that you need to appreciate in here is that the retail traders or the shorter term traders are reacting to interest rates. And if you listen to our comment over the weekend, the comment um, talked about it. And I, the last thing in the comment, I said I had a, you know, a slight negative bias. Um, because of the interest rates. And of course that is negative bias is, is playing out. But 
understand in here that what's going on right now, short term retail traders are reacting to the interest rates and they're selling. The longer term funds are not selling from what I can see. And the volume was just unbelievably low yesterday, which tells me it's more than likely you're getting emotions, not longer term selling. So you've got short term traders, you know, selling the market based on interest rates. You've got the longer term money and you keep hearing them on TV. They're still relatively bullish. Now, I hate the word bearish and bullish. That doesn't mean they're right. But understand that a lot of times markets will drop seven to eight, nine percent before the longer term money comes in and starts to sell. And that and that hasn't happened yet. But that's one of the things to, to keep in mind. And one of the things that makes this very, very tricky. So many times, most, most short-term traders are focused on momentum. Momentum price index. If you look, for example, right here, when I'm talking about, the, I think this is the 29th, the 28th, no excess on the low, the 29th. <coughs> this is all price-based. <clears throat> there's no context around it. When I'm looking at it using market generated information, I'm looking at the context and as I'm seeing this go up, I'm saying the market is very weak. Even though the price is going higher, the underlying structure is not supportive of that market. Real successful trading will have a great understanding of momentum trading and understand that's what most people do and you, you want to definitely be aware of that but then you get a secondary understanding through market generated information that helps you understand better when that momentum has gotten to be overdone all right let's take a small break uh in here jen do a commercial we, reason we do this of course is to draw attention to our educational programs. Jen, do a commercial and then we'll come back and talk about the market and get ready for the opening. Uh, yeah, hold on one second. Um, RJ, you wanna change your thing so I can see which one is the organizer here? There seems to be a problem there. Okay, you want me to just start talking about it? Yeah, you can start talking. Okay. The the next program we have coming up is the intensive and that's our premier program it's about 60 hours of instruction it runs about uh, four and a half to, to five weeks there is a prerequisite there is a prerequisite to that program the, the prerequisite is that you have attended a, a prior intensive or you have completed the foundational e-course we get tremendous number of people that say well you know, I've learned market profile from others. Uh, uh, I don't need the foundational e-course. And they're always asking for exceptions. And we don't grant those exceptions. We uh, we used to, um, but we find out that without that background, you really don't have the understanding from us of how we approach the market. So we don't, we don't allow exceptions in there. But the, uh, the real core, the, the foundational e-course, it's about a whole oh, 12 to 15 hour course. Um, and it walks The foundation you course is over 11 hours. So if you go to our website, jimdeltontrading.com, and then you go to courses at the top, you'll see that the intensive is featured up at the top. Schedule is here in case you want to know the timings and topics of our webinars. Um, but the foundation e-course is, is um, you have to scroll down further. We've got our bundles featured first in the listings. Um, so if you're wanting to join us for the intensive, but you haven't done the prerequisite requirement of the foundation e-course, you're going to want to do uh, the bundle that contains both so that you can come and join us. And you get a nice discount right now for um, doing more than one course. And this is the only time that we offer these special discounted bundles is when we're um, advertising for for an intensive so otherwise our e-course 
our e-courses don't usually go on sale, but you'll see that we do. If you have done the foundation e-course already, you haven't joined us for an intensive in a bit, but you also want to do the advanced nuances e-course, we have that bundle here as well. And uh, you can see here the foundation e-course right here. And so we have a little bit of a syllabus right here. And uh, whenever you purchase any of our e-courses, you get access to them for three years from date of purchase. And if during that period of time we add a lesson, you will automatically get access to uh, that lesson, the additional lessons. So um, if you have any questions about which course is right for you or you got additional questions and clarifications you need, by all means, you can email us at Dalton at JimDaltonTrading.com or give us a call at the bottom of our website and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. But I will mention that our bundles are only going to be available for about another two weeks because otherwise we know that it's not possible to really um, complete that before joining us for an intensive. So please keep that in mind that our uh, bundles will be available for about another two weeks if that's something that you're on the fence about um, joining us for the intensive. Okay? Okay. Okay, I'll right. give you back the screen, Jim. One Thank second. you. The, the next intensive coming up, and you don't have to be part of the intensive to read the book, but that we're starting this in, intensive with a tremendous amount of emphasis to begin with on the importance of self-understanding. Successful trading is a combination of market understanding and self-understanding. In self-understanding, one of the things that will help you tremendously is understanding the place of intuition um, in trading. There's a, there's a book, it's called Gut Instincts. Gut Instincts is gonna be the first book we're gonna cover, uh, and then it's gonna be followed by Emotional Intelligence. So it's gonna be the, the two starting points for the next intensity, because the, the psychological, how you deal with things mentally and psychologically are so very, very relevant. If, if your intuition is not honed, you will make constant mistakes. If somebody says to me, oh, I, you know, I've got good intuition and they don't have a basis for that, uh, I'm pretty skeptical. But there is a way to hone intuition. It takes time. But if you look at anybody that is really proficient in, in uh, whether it be sports or some kind of profession, art, music, anything that, you know, is really relies so much on the, on the self, you will find that it takes a lot of time and they are just very, very good and they can adapt very quickly. We have one client who is a world-class flutist. I think, I think flutist and she travels all over the world and she can go in if, if she can make it a call to play in the Japanese symphony orchestra because they've got a, a, someone is sick or an injury or something. And she can go in even without rehearsal and play in that orchestra. That takes a tremendous amount of experience and it takes a tremendous amount of really being in tune with everything. Um, okay, I, I won't go any further that, on that and say that intuition is so important. It can be, it can be honed. We work on how to hone it, starting with understanding gut instincts it's just it's just a great read it's a difficult read it's a difficult read it took me probably three three reads to really start to understand um the significance of it okay now we come back to today's market we gapped lower yesterday the gap trading guidelines are as follows go with all gaps that aren't filled fairly quickly and i can't exactly tell you what fairly quickly is. If the gap is filled, then you're, you shift to monitoring for um, developing value. So right now, we would gap lower. The market opens in about 15 minutes. We would gap lower as of right now. If the gap is not, if the gap is filled, then the, uh, your focus shifts to 
developing value from yesterday. If the gap is not filled, then the downside reference becomes this non-excess low from the 28th. And I think that non-excess low is uh, 44, 23, uh, 50. So you're in between two references, which would be yesterday's low and this non-excess low from 828. If the gap is filled, uh, then you really want to see, are you getting good upside follow through? Would you want to start elongating out? You want to get into yesterday's value area and you want to make sure you get back to the point of control and through to settle. If it's not filled on, on a gap, lower gap, the best selling opportunity is an attempt to fill the gap where volume and tempo slow. Now, this market has been um, focusing very much on um, interest rates. And interest rates, so, you know, they're all, they're, they're, up a little bit from yesterday. Most of that I think is uh, related to the, the markets going down in there. I think you're getting some uh, flight to safety in there. Okay, there's the most important thing in, in this market is that the trend is now down. It's short-term trend. The long-term trend hasn't changed. The, the short-term trend is down. I see no evidence that the longer term money has come in yet. Remember, I said a lot of times the market's got to be down seven, eight, nine percent before they start to panic. And they don't believe the market. They're still looking the longer term money, the best I can figure out. They're still looking for a pullback in the market to give them a, an opportunity to enter in. If you look at the high, we, while we have excess on the high, and I think the excess took out the last March high, but only about a couple ticks. So there was no real selling. The selling from the high looks to be liquidation, not new money selling. All right, Jim, I've, I've talked about a lot, and I know that most people are looking for specific points to buy and sell, uh, and that's just really not how the markets you know, work very often. But let me take some questions, please. Okay, somebody's asking, why do you say that September is a month of the, you know, of the 1% loser? That's just historic. That's just, they look back and uh, the markets just have not done very well in the month of September. And it's, it's uh, there's no, you know, there's no great reasoning for it other than history, okay? Okay, how do you define intuition? Intuition, if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden there's a tree branch, um, you know, coming out from the, the, over the street, you just duck and walk under it, right? You don't think anything about it. That is intuition. You've learned over a long period of time, it's built into your, to your system and you know if you didn't have intuition you'd run right into the branch those are the type of things when you you drive a car you've learned a lot um about it i tell the story many many years ago it was uh, coming from um la jolla california to la it was a heavy traffic and caught my attention, just a brief type of thing, cars about three up from me, all of a sudden, I just caught out of the corner of my eye that the fender on that car was coming into the, uh, to the lane to its right. I just automatically, I had a stick shift, I automatically downshifted, a little sports car downshifted, cut to the left on about a 45 degree angle, got out of that mess, there was a tremendous crash, multiple cars, multiple deaths in it. That was intuition. Now I learned to, I learned to drive on a wheat, I learned to drive on a wheat field uh, as a kid. A cut wheat is very, very thin. And you know, you, you learn a lot by practicing out there, but that's, that's intuition. You know, sometimes somebody says something to you and you know not to respond. 
that's intuition. Um, it is very, we don't, we don't understand, very seldom do we understand how powerful our brains are and what is going on inside that head. And it's, it's very helpful if you, if you understand it. And intuition comes in best when you have to make very quick decisions. You know, if you're 50 yards away from the branch, um, walking down the street, you know, you get plenty of time to think about it, right? But if all of a sudden you turn the corner and there's the branch out there, you don't have time to think and you react very quickly. The books that, that I recommend to start, if, if you're serious about understanding that, there's the first really actually two books. Uh, David Eagleman, um, the, I, I think it's the story of the, the, the brain, the story of you. Um, it was the companion piece of the PBS series. And then his second book, uh, called Incognito. And Incognito really gives you a good understanding of how the brain works and what intuition is all about. Um, so that's a starting point. And then, of course, I advanced and I, I really like the, uh, the, gut, the gut feeling. The gut feelings brings it down to a much more practical use and understanding. Okay, what else have we got there, Jen? Okay, uh, Jim, we don't have a high in the overnight session at 46.35 and the September 1st at 45.48, indicating that the auction is not complete to the upside. I'm sorry, one more time on that question. We don't have a high in the overnight session at 46.35 and September 1st at 45.48, indicating that the auction is not complete to the upside. Not necessarily. You know, we you take you take what is in front of you right now. Remember, we are short term we are short term traders, and we're taking what is in front of us right now. Yes, I make the statement that you know I don't like it when all time all time highs and all time lows are made in the overnight market. Other than that, I don't pay much attention to it. But the most important thing as a short term trader is deal with the market, deal with what the market is giving you right now okay okay uh thank you for the week ahead and letting us know about your bias to the downside the three-day balance you pointed out worked perfectly um just so folks know if you go to our website jimdaltontrading.com on the on the home page there we do have links to our official twitter or x i sh should say account as well as our youtube and we put out a week ahead video usually every sunday in case that's something that you're interested in. Um, you marked the afternoon pullback low on the chart. Is there anything wrong with marking the M period high as the rally high instead? You know, it's it's a personal preference. It's a personal preference. Um, I don't have any problem with, you know, you do what works for you. And what's important is you, you evaluate it over time. Don't just do it and believe it continually evaluate it. Over the years, I have changed many things over the years, either because I got more information on it or because markets changed. Um, markets markets are fluid and we have people are fluid. Things do change. Um, if you notice, if you read, if you've read the uh, my initial book, Mind Over Markets, and you look at what we talk about now, there's multiple changes, the things that we don't, uh, adhere to either because I didn't validate what I initially learned from Pete or things just changed in the uh, in the marketplace. Um, okay, what else? Okay, any comments regarding the overnight high since it was only one tick above the settle? I don't pay any attention to that. The only thing I look at overnight, I look at <clears throat> I look at the high, I look at the low, I look at double distributions. Um, I don't, there's not, <clears throat> there's not enough trading overnight to give validity to the profile. Um, you just not, there's just not enough activity. Um, probably if you look and you say, okay, the high is exactly at the settle. Yeah, I, I'm probably aware of it, but I'm not going to over, I'm not going to overweight that. What I'm looking, I'm saying, okay, the number one thing, and, and the most important thing is to take what's in front of you. Right now, market's going to open in a couple minutes. The gap, the gap is the first 
thing we're looking at this morning. The gap, the gap trading guidelines. Go with all gaps that aren't filled fairly quickly. The best, the best opportunity to short is on a, a attempted rally with the volume and the tempo slow down. If the gap is filled, then you start to monitor for continuation to the upside. Monitoring for continuation is probably the most valuable piece of learning you'll ever do to be a successful trader. Too many times, you know, people get a little profit and they get out and they leave all kind of money on the table. Uh, they really don't know how to monitor. For, for example, we're gonna, we're gonna gap now. What am I looking at? My two references are gonna be yesterday's low and this non-excess low from 828, which I've been carrying forward for some period of time. Okay, final question. Okay, uh, we've got two. Um, somebody was asking, why is the L period low, the afternoon pullback low, and not the J period low for you? Just my, just a personal choice. Okay, um, wouldn't the Apple China news be more pertinent than interest rates for the last couple of days? Oh, I think, no, I think actually, I think the interest rates are probably more than anything else. I mean, the Apple news, yeah, the Apple news is, is one of those short-term stimulus response type of things. But I, I think both are very relevant. Okay, I'm going to say thank you very much. Uh, Jen can stay if people have questions on any of the educational courses. Have a great day. Bye now. Okay. Um, once again, here, let me take the screen. Hold on one second, Jim, if you don't mind. Let me... I'm going. Hold on. Uh, let me take care of this here. Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen. Uh, the books that Jim was discussing earlier, um, he mentioned several. You can find our books list under resources, uh, books here. And you'll see that he was talking about the two that we're going to be focusing on for this fall intensive will be um, emotional intelligence right here and then gut feelings right here. And then I had mentioned earlier about our YouTube channel. Um, you can access that right here. Make sure that's the correct one. Um, and then once again, you know, I get some questions about the foundation e-course because that is the prerequisite requirement um, in order to join us for the live intensive. We currently have bundles available right now, so you get a discount for purchasing more than one course. Uh, the bundles will be available for about two more weeks, and then um, we know that it's it's kind of too difficult to be able to get through it to make sure that you have enough knowledge before taking the intensive. So. Um, as of right now, if you have any questions with regards to which course is right for you or or um, you've got some specific questions uh, before signing up, by all means, you can give us uh, a call at the number down here or shoot us an email. Um, and then somebody else was just mentioning about putting in the work. I would definitely agree with that. Um, in our last webinar, we had somebody who said, you know, is it enough time to do the foundation e-course before the intensive? If you have, you know, we've got like, what, another at least three weeks here, um, three and a half weeks or whatever, before the intensive starts on October 4th. If you have time to devote to doing the foundation e-course, because you will need to go through it more than once, it would definitely be enough time. Um, you know, when we come into our intensives, we kind of hit the ground running. So while it might be a little bit overwhelming, overwhelming for some, I think it's it's one of those things where you have to start somewhere, right? And um, and essentially, uh, Jim is in his 80s, and so if you've ever if you've been considering it, the time is now to to get in and and get involved and and learn from Jim directly, see how he analyzes you know on a day-to-day -day basis for you know a little over a whole month there it's a great experience um and we're also in a very interesting market so anyhow if you've got any questions by all means contact us i'd be happy to speak with you and hope you have a great rest of your day and week and see you at the next webinar thank you